Okay, everybody, check under your seats. That's right. You get a compressor, you get a... Everybody gets a compressor. Well, not really. I got a free compressor. Hopefully, you guys can find one as well if you just check the right spots. Here we got a mint condition DeWalt air compressor that I picked up the other day for free. Doesn't work. I'm sure it's something super simple. Let me show you. Now I have not plugged this in or anything. The lady I got this from said her husband just says it doesn't work anymore. That's it. Looking at it, that was enough said. I mean, there's not a scratch on it. It was just a homeowner. Little rubber feeder, mint condition. Um, there was no air in it, but I opened it up the drain valves. There's one top and bottom for each tank. I think this is probably a four gallon. Each one's probably two gallons. And no water dripped out, so that's good. I've got compressors before with rusted out tanks, but we can look at the front on off switch. I have not tried anything. I'm almost positive I know what it is. And it should only take a couple seconds to fix, but let's plug it in. Make sure it's off, zero pressure. Let's plug it in. It's plugged in and let's flip it on. Nothing. So some of you guys already know this, but compressors almost always have these. This is a built-in circuit breaker and it is tripped. Sometimes they're red dots, like my Quincy right here, and it's been painted over, but it was red. This is the reset button on it and this will pop out and you just push it. So I have it off. Is it really this simple? You know what? I even noticed something else right here. It actually says circuit breaker, press to reset. Let's do it. It's reset. Could I have gotten a $250 air compressor for free because of that? No. We are seized. Well, dang, that left me a little speechless. I thought this was gonna be super simple and just bam, but that motor is not spinning. So this part is not moving. We have to figure out, I guess, why. I guess we gotta pull off the plastic shroud and see why the, the electric motor is not spinning. So we're gonna do that. So I took off the main airline, the, the compressor, feels the air compressor with, and then the plastic shroud and then this thing just kind of snapped right off so this is what we're left so there's a little circuit breaker right here that was tripped but if we look at this we got the fan back here now this is surprising you would think that the locking up that this thing was seized but So we could be something as simple as possibly just a start capacitor. And I might have one. I don't know if I have this right microfarad one. We can test it. So all of these have a uh, microfarad rating. And about the only way you can test them is with a tester like this. But they're actually pretty dang cheap. So this one says 60. So we should be able to see what we get here. And we get zero. Nothing. So, my start capacitor is bad. Okay, for testing purposes, I do not have a 60 microfarad. I do have a uh, 45. This leg is 45, this leg is five. So this is 45. And this is 15, so we can, this is off an AC unit. Let's just put this over here. We can rob power from both and share. So there's 45. Now I gotta be careful because once I do this, these are gonna be charged up and I don't wanna touch them. And it's gonna be live. So hopefully this motor doesn't 
jump around when we fire it up. Pretty good. Danger. Ready? Contact. Fixed. So what some of you might be saying, well, how am I supposed to do this without a uh, without a tool to test it? I think I only paid I I think I paid around uh, 10 bucks, 15 bucks for this. I'll put a link to one below. But it has come in handy. I mean, everything has capacitors these days. Everything. I've fixed TVs with this. I've fixed AC units. I've fixed now it's compressors. I was able to test my compressor to make sure, you know, I'm diagnosing the, it was the best $10 on a meter I've ever spent. Now this isn't the only type of motor that's in a compressor. Uh, these small motors are completely different than like a stand-up compressor where you have, you know, like a motor and it belt drives something else. Those motors are different. I have a video on those motors. Those motors are kind of, those are capacitor start, capacitor run, but then they have a centrifugal switch. This right here is a capacitor start slash the capacitor, as far as I understand, and I could be a little bit off, the capacitor, while it's running, um, gives it a phase shift, electrical, the, the electric field gives it a phase shift to keep the motor running more efficiently. So you have to have um, the capacitor on and you have to have the right value. Uh, AC fans, stuff like that, like for um, your blower fans, for your furnace and stuff like that, are this. It's like a, it's a start capacitor, but it's also a run capacitor because it uses this for phase shifting. Uh, just got to buy a start capacitor. But now these things, are, uh, they, they're storing energy. So it's never safe to discharge them, but if we throw a screwdriver across them, we might get a spark. Nope. Sometimes they have a... Uh, a resistor in line that discharges them for you. We're good. So, all I gotta do is find any 60 microfarad. I don't have to buy this exact proprietary with a bolt on the bottom. Something that's glued on there or something. All I gotta do is find a 60 microfarad up to the voltage, which this is 275, but you know. Anything that would handle the voltage, the 120 mains voltage, would suffice. And set it in there, and this thing is fixed. So, off to the internet. Amazon comes through again. 13 bucks. We've got a new capacitor. The sizing and shaping doesn't really matter. Um, this is just a generic one for AC units. 60, 60 UF, which is, it's a weird looking U, but 60 microfarads. And it says plus or minus 5%, so it can be 60 uh, plus or minus 3, so it could be 57 to 63, same rating as this one. You know, they're all, virtually they're all going to say 5%. This one's 60 UF, microfarads. And this one's rated for 275 volts, this one's rated for 250, doesn't matter, I'm only running it on 120. So, a little bit smaller, we'll have to put it in a little bit different, no big deal. Let's, um, well, let's actually test it. That'd be handy. Just throw it on here, and I should get right about 60. 60.5. Even better, I got more than I paid for. Nice. Now, let's take this off. And one of the reasons, so you got to think, you know, why did it fail in the beginning? And I think one of the reasons it failed is vibration and heat. Having this mounted right here with the heat, you know, this is actually has an aluminum housing on this one. The the heat from this, these get blazing hot. Heat from that being there and the vibration being directly on the motor, it's just going to vibrate the death out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hook this up. I'm going to have to cover up these other terminals right here. But I'm actually going to mount it. There's plenty of room. I'm going to actually drill a hole and zip tie it just to the inside of the housing. Where this housing will act kind of like a vibration dampener. 
Got to make, I want to change that out. I don't know why there's a male fitting on the end. Found an old one off a of hose. And we'll put some thread sealing on here. I actually like this stuff. I don't mind Teflon tape. I actually don't mind it at all. But I find this stuff, these threads are a little buggered. I had to take this, uh, this MPT close fitting off of a, uh, close fitting off of a, other pipe and it's kind of gouged up a little bit so I find this uh, this Loctite 565 pipe sealant actually seals a lot better than just trying to keep loading the uh, the tape on there click and then you just go Meh. so I'll put a link below if you guys want to try this stuff out but I really like it uh, 565 Loctite. Drum roll, please. Grrr. National Lampoons. Here we go. Had a couple little leaks here and there. The, just tightened everything up, sprayed some soapy water on. We're good. This thing is fast. This thing, from 0 PSI all the way up to 120, it took... 80 seconds, 90 seconds, and it seems to have about a 15 second cycle time from when it gets pressure, gets down to the 90 PSI, up back up to 15 seconds. This thing is really fast. Um, my quick release fitting was leaking, but I have a whole video on how just quickly double the life of those. So that's working good. Everything's working. Um, nice and quiet. It's actually not too loud. Uh, there's, you know, it's way better than one of those little teeny Harbor Freight turds. But, let's uh, play with some air. Let's see what Ginger thinks about it. A $13 DeWalt air compressor. You can't beat that, especially something with such low hours. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoy that. If you, I have another compressor video on larger compressors. So, I'll put a link to that. And a link to any other videos that pertain to this. See you guys soon. Bye. Ginger absolutely loves air compressors. Get it. Come on. Go ahead. Get it. Come in.